This issue as it's been raised, uh, mostly by Johnny, by the way. Uh, <laughs> in the news, you know, like he said. Um, the next week after Johnny and I talked about this a little bit about this presentation, the next week in our newspaper, our local newspaper, um, comes this article about Fair and City, which is where I live. And uh, the meeting was open. I'm just going to give you a little tidbits from this article. The meeting was open for public comment, uh, whereupon some, several citizens started complaining about a trailer park that was trashy and it would be cleaned up. And they were saying, well, you know, can't you do something? And then one suggested, well, let's, you know, give them 30 days and then charge them. And the mayor says, well, we can't put them in jail, but we can attach the bill to their property tax. And, they, and then someone calls the landlord a slumlord, and uh, not, not council members, but someone in the audience, and then someone else said, he's not a slumlord, and he works hard. Then they got this going back and forth, uh, and then uh, one of the residents of the uh, trailer park is there, uh, and then complains about the neighbors threatening her and her dogs, and that, uh, and that at one point then the mayor restored order to the council meeting and warned that any further behavior would stop public comments. Um, and then one of the council members said, well, I blame the landlord. And they go on to have some more discussion. Finally, the mayor says, there no more comments about the meeting. Anyway, I talked to the, uh, the gal that put this article together, and she said, that's very muted as to what really went on. She says they were yelling and uh, name calling, and but she didn't support all that. So interesting in all that because they uh, opened the meeting to uh, public comments. Um, there are certain things we have to do in our uh, meetings, and uh, one is the notice uh, of the agenda, and that's been tweaked a little bit over the years, and right now requires uh, reasonable specificity. Now, uh, that means you have to put what you're going to talk about on there so the public will know what is going to be discussed. So you can't just put uh, personnel or <coughs> landfill or just one word things, but actually what is the item you're going to talk about, what's the possible action. It has to be fairly specific. Um, Non-agenda items. It's okay to talk about them um, if the public raises an issue, and they will. And by the way, how many are regularly go to their commission meeting? I know we got some county attorneys this year. So quite a few. Of you. Oh, and you commissioners. I'm glad to see Bill, that. Bill showed up. Commissioners are fairly regular. Um, and I know a lot of our staff tries to avoid them, but they have to go to some. But uh, anyway, um, I, I've been curious to know how often this goes on. And I went through some parts. We'll, we'll talk a little later about what we, some of the things we did at our meetings, which were uh, not on the agenda. But, um, so then the, uh, so the public notice goes in advance, and that now, is, uh, it was mentioned earlier by the web, it's be on the website. Uh, and, but you cannot take any action on non-agenda items. So it may be uh, something that comes up that you can't take action to discuss it, and what we do usually is say, uh, we'll put that on the agenda for the next time, we'll research it, we'll, you know, have it. All right, open uh, minutes of open comment. That's the other problem. Is you have to uh, put in your minutes. Clerks are going to love this. What is said by whom? Especially in public hearings. Uh, public hearings require that. Um, and so you'll want the name of the person and what they said, not quoted. About words like slow and word, things like that. But at least kind of what they were for or against, and uh, kind of the substance of what they say. 
so minutes, uh, and it, these are all new tweets, these fairly new. Um, maintaining order. You can be like the mayor, uh, have people removed if they get unruly. So that's always a little confusing. Uh, okay, enforcement. This is also uh, one that uh, I think one of the things that makes uh, us nervous uh, is that they can uh, actually bring it to court. So if you have something on here, you can talk about something, you make a motion, uh, pass it, and it ha wasn't on the agenda, you can have somebody who can say, hey, wait a minute, that wasn't on the agenda, you need to, uh, can't do that, make it hire an attorney, and the attorney can sue you and have that reversed. And then uh, this bottom line here is uh, the one that probably makes us most nervous is that uh, they can award reasonable attorneys. Which are never reasonable. I was just going to say, who's <laughs> ever heard of reasonable attorneys? Really. Uh, so that's that's one of the themes uh, that we look at. And then there's also this, which uh, I don't know. Have you ever heard of anybody being charged with this? Because they didn't, uh, they normally are intentionally violated. I, I haven't had that. I've been not here in Utah, but it happens regularly. Uh, and that's any violations of closed meetings. Uh, we got threatened with this a few years ago. Uh, and we actually had to divulge what went on in our closed meetings so they would know it, it was fine. Uh, anyway, I always wondered, I guess the attorney general would charge me. Maybe they'd get another attorney in one of the other counties. Um, okay, meetings. Um, I'm going to talk about uh, three types of meetings. I think these are uh, the, the county meeting, which is the one that we go to regularly or should go to, uh, to conduct business. And then there's some that are public hearings required uh, in the legislative capacity. And that is. Um, a lot of those are the tax increases, bond issuances, uh, road closures, where you have to actually have a public hearing. And that's where the requirement is. If somebody comes and appears with that, says so that, then they have to uh, mm -hmm. have their name in the record, how they you know what they report against. Or, and then there's also due process uh, hearings in uh, uh, quasi judicial capacity. And that would be zoning decisions and uh, employee discipline, uh, appeals to the Board of Adjustment. Um, those uh, due process meetings, uh, did anyone serve on a jury recently? No jurors in here? Corby, you serve every year. Yeah, I get called, but they never pick me. Oh, <laughs> so you, won't, you served on one? Do you remember the charge when you're leaving? You've heard some evidence, and then you're leaving? Remember what the judge says to you? Don't be long. Don't be long. <laughs> Maybe that was special for you, Bill. Uh, what, what they'll say is, don't discuss the case, don't talk to it, don't read newspapers. They don't want anything outside what's actually in your meeting or in the uh, trial to influence your decision. <laughs> And so that's that's why um, uh, they can't hear other issues. They don't want to hear about what somebody said outside. That's undue influence. And I, I had a sister-in-law that sat on a criminal jury, and um, she called me the first day after she'd been on it and said, uh, oh, I got some questions. I'm on this jury, and they're saying the guy did this. I know there's more to it, but they're not telling us. And so she and I said, I'm not even going to talk to you. I said, you're not supposed to talk to anybody. You're not supposed to go on little side adventures and try to figure out what's going on. You're supposed to listen to the evidence presented and make your decision based on that. And that's the same thing with these uh, uh, 
quasi-judicial hearings, only the, uh, what comes before the board nothing else. And did you want to talk about those three? Yeah, these. Yeah, the understanding of those kind of three different differences <laughs> and, and maybe trying to get your constituents to understand the difference between these three types of meetings, I think is really the key to this whole thing. That the commissioners meet in three very different capacities, and most people don't see it as that. They, it's just a commission meeting, and one is just like any other. But you have your general commission meeting where you see most of these public comment things um, happening, and again, there, there is no legal requirement for the, for the comment. And the courts have ruled on that several times. There's been several law cases, or, uh, court cases, I think it's gone all the way to the Supreme Court, that says that people don't have the right to speak at this meeting. That is the, that is the government's business meeting. It's their meeting. They set the agenda. So you, there's no requirement to set and allow public comment, but most do from a public relations standpoint, you allow it. Um, then you have your public hearings on different issues like the budget, things like that, that you have to have a public hearing and you have to listen to your constituency before you make a decision in that area. And those public hearings are required. A lot of times you'll get people coming to the public comment session to make comment about something that will come up in a public hearing later. And so they're just kind of wasting their air. You know, direct them, they should be going to the public hearing so that it's at their appropriate venue. Then as Dave talked about, every now and then you have this quasi-judicial due process hearing. Anytime that the, that the commission sits as the last resort for anybody that has a, a grief with the county. They've asked for a permit, the Planning and Zoning Commission denied it, they, they've appealed it now to the County Commission. Or uh, an employee, your employee process, for, uh, your employee practices are that if, they don't, if the employee doesn't agree with the termination, they get to go to the County Board and make their case to the County Board one last time before they're terminated. All of those types of hearings are, like Dave said, the only thing that the county commissioners can consider in those settings is what's provided at that hearing. They're not supposed to consider anything else outside of that hearing. The most uh, uh, touchy one that Corby and I pull our hair out over are the ones that have to do with land use claims. The permits, the variances, the zoning issues, and things like that because those ones get, get down to the very technical issues of when someone's permit is denied and they've gone to this hearing and the evidence was provided to the commissioners and then they find out that, hey, there was somebody at public comment that made a bunch of comments about my permit as well, claiming how if you allow that permit, it's gonna reduce my property values, it's gonna ruin the neighborhood, it's gonna cause traffic concerns, public safety concerns. But when the court finds out that that happened, they're gonna assume that the commissioners took that into consideration when they made their decision on the due process hearing that they weren't and they weren't supposed to and we lose the case we violated the person's rights to due process because you listened to that outside public clamor that you shouldn't have heard and so that that's the one that's why that circle doesn't follow over top of any of the others because when you're in that capacity, you, get, you have to keep that completely separate. And I think that's that's my biggest concern with this is, is that violation of public, uh, of the due process. Um, because again, the courts say, when you are in an administrative capacity like that, you can only consider the things that are in your ordinance at the time that that person filed their permit. And people may come and say, our ordinance is horrible. We can't have that. They're finding a loophole in the ordinance. Well, maybe they did, but that's one of those too bad. The county can't change the ordinance and doesn't need to listen to any advice on how to change the ordinance until they're past this due process and make that decision. They have to make that decision based on ordinance as it applied the day that they 
file that permit. Now, after that due process hearing, and you begrudgingly have to allow the permit because they found a loophole, now you can go back and, and open up discussion to make a change to the ordinance. Then you can get as much of that public input as you want, and the courts want you to get that public input. But just not in consideration of that individual specific permit. Um, the, the other concern that I have, obviously, is, is the open meetings violation. Again, when the commissioners have the public comment period, and people come up and they're talking about things that aren't on the agenda, um, that's fine again if it just is public comment. Um, once the uh, commission allows to, that it to turn into discussion, again, as long as the, uh, the commission chair has said, okay, we're going to discuss this. I'm going to open this up for discussion. The statute says that, that needs to happen. It's not any commissioner. The chair allows discussion. Now you can discuss it. But when commissioners start making comments of, yep, yeah, I agree with that, that, we're going to do that, have they made a decision? That people are going to argue they've already made their decision the night that it was that night. And the night that they have it on their agenda, they're really just ratifying a decision that they already made, and that's a violation of the Open Meetings Act. So you need to be very careful and, and when, when you're either a commissioner in this, or watch your commissioners, because again, it's not just the commissioners that are that are going to be uh, liable for the violation. It's anyone else that abets or advises. So if they say, well, we, can we take that action? And the county attorney says, I think you can. You're as guilty as they are. And, and, or if it's uh, any other, the auditor, the clerk, whoever's there, they, and they turn to you and say, well, can we do this tonight or do we need to put it on a different agenda? I give them the wrong advice. You're as guilty as they are, so play it safe. My, my, my suggestions. Um, the other thing about this is not only will it violate, possibly violate the Open Meetings Act, but uh, there's, because you're not prepared, you may not have any ability to give the correct information about misinformation that's provided. And one of the county attorney, or county uh, commission meetings that I went to that I got real concerned, a person came up on open public comments, somebody that knew the workings of the county budget very well, or, or knew how it was supposed to work, came in with all kinds of numbers and figures that they were throwing out of how much money the county was spending. And the whole time, the auditors just shaking their head because none of the numbers were right. But there was no way for them to give the right answers. So everybody left that meeting thinking the county was spending and wasting and misappropriating all this money, and it just wasn't true, but no one was prepared, because they didn't know that was gonna be an issue to discuss, no one was prepared with the right numbers that night. Really frustrating, not, not just for, for you, the, the staff and commissioners, but also for other people there in the audience that are getting that wrong information, get all riled up about it, and then come to find out that they were just provided bad information. And then again, they, they usually come to make a comment because they want you to do something, and when you don't do something, they're really frustrated that, that oh, my commissioners aren't going to take any action on this. They won't even talk about it. You know, I come and I, I take my time to come and talk to them, and they won't even say anything. So, um, that can be really frustrating for them and, and lead to lawsuit. Um, the libel slander is another issue that I brought up when I went out and, and talked with commissioners about this. Of course, this is the, probably the, the weakest or the, or the least of my concerns with this, so that's the one that the press picked up on, is, is the one that's easy to shoot down. Because yeah, the, the courts have said that the government entity can't be held liable for things that are said in that meeting by others. You're held liable for what you say, but not others. You can't be held liable for that. And they're saying, what is, this Johnny Miller guy doesn't know what the heck he's talking about. He's, you know, he, they've, got life, they've got immunity for that. They can't be sued for what somebody else says. They, can they be sued for it? I think they sued for it. Uh, yeah. Sue anybody for any reason. Exactly. This might not hold up. And they do. If, if, if we didn't have any cost for any of the claims that counties have immunity for, Corby would be doing something else. Because two thirds of the money that we spend at USIP is to defend claims that the county has immunity. 
That's why almost all of our claims are thrown out on summary judgment. The majority of them are. So it's not that the county is going to have to pay a lawsuit for this slander. It's that you're going to have to pay tens of thousands of dollars to get to the point where the judge says, you're right, you have immunity, I'm going to throw the case out. That second comment there was not me. It's not referring to me. But thanks for putting she in there. Yeah. All right. Uh, managing the agenda. Uh, some of my ideas as far as how to how to deal with this issue. And it, again, this is an issue that's that's kind of starting to come to the top because it, it just kind of became an issue last month. Um, the uh, commissioners and council people will be discussing this. I'll be doing this uh, another presentation uh, along with uh, the Salt Lake County attorney and one of the Open Public Meeting Act lobbyists um, next week at the USAC conference but in front of the commissioners and council people um, to try and figure out where is this going to go from here. But some of my ideas for you people on the ground that are trying to help the commission to stay out of trouble, here it is. Have a policy and procedure for the persons that are uh, that they apply for a spot on the agenda, um, and what it is that they want to talk about, and how much time they want. And I know myself trying to get on the county agenda in many of the counties. That's the process I have to go to, even though I work for the county more or less. I have to fill out the application. I have to get it to the clerk's office. I have to wait for the commissioners to decide if they want to see me at that meeting or not. And then they'll tell me how much time I have on the agenda. That's the process that that I suggest you go through. Um, and the, that way, if you go through that process, first of all, the commissioners can make sure that that business meeting of theirs is efficient. If they all one month have 14 different people that want to be on the agenda, well, they don't have time to to do all those agenda items. They need to put some of the lower priority issues off till the next meeting. And so if they can manage how long that meeting is gonna be and how many items they discuss this week and how many they put off till the, till the next meeting um, through that process. By going through this process and having all the issues on the agenda, not only do you, are you covering yourself from the Open Public Meetings Act uh, standpoint, but now people can read the agenda and know what's gonna be discussed and if they're interested in that issue, they can come to the meeting. Obviously, if, if, I find, if I find out that during open public comment, one of my neighbors came and complained about the way I keep my yard or take my garbage out or have cars parked on my property, and that was discussed by the city council, and I didn't even know that they were going to discuss it, I'm pissed. And, I sh and there's no reason I shouldn't be. The, the Open Public Meetings Act says that if they're going to discuss anything, it's on the agenda. And that's exactly why they want that part of the Open Meetings Act, is so that everybody knows, and if you're interested, you can be there. Open public comment completely uh, sets that aside and uh, disrupts that process. So, Charlie? Yes? If you do that, do you open yourselves up to anybody that makes an application to come in? happy to hear what they say no again it's it's the county's meeting if the commissioners don't want to hear that issue don't see that it's relevant to them they don't have to put it on the agenda there's no obligation for them to it might become an issue at, at re-election time but that's for them to decide yeah, that was well a couple of weeks ago we had uh, someone that wanted a spot on the agenda and asked for it and want to talk about a UDOT issue. It was a state road. It wasn't that much for the county. So we said, no, you know, that's, you need to go see the county. So instead of having him, but he could easily show up at our citizens' concerns and said, hey, I want to you know, do this. I've just been wasting everybody's time. So you can control that. Okay. Well, my commissioners in the past have said that they don't want to talk to any cell phone. You know, so if I if somebody calls and wants an appointment, there I can tell her a salesperson or what I talked to them about, and they say, you know, no. I mean, that's an easy one. The fact that that you, you have a purchasing policy 
that's been adopted by the county or you're following the state purchasing policy, there's no reason to talk to salesmen. When you're ready to buy something, you'll go off the bid according to your purchasing policy. Now, if, if you're, if you're going to uh, handle or use this open public comment, and again, I'm, I'm not telling counties don't do it. That avoidance is the first level that you go to, right, Charlene? You avoid it if you have the risk. That's the best practice. Just don't have a public comment. Let your constituency know there are times when we want to have you here and give us advice. It's during public hearings, and it's at relevant uh, due process hearings when you're when you have relevant testimony. Otherwise, you know, it, it, it's, it's not. It, it can get us in trouble to have you there. So to manage it, um, I, I, I've seen several different counties and, and cities as well uh, manage this through just setting the ground rules. Again, because you don't have a legal obligation to have this comment period, if you do, you can set the rules around it. So make sure that you tell the people, and, and I would suggest that the, the chairman have the script written and mm -hmm. read it. You know, I, I just actually attended a, a, a city meeting where it's an issue that I have with the city, my, all, all my neighbors have with the trail that runs through a backyard in the city of Draper. We went to the city council meeting and they had an open public comments period. And then the mayor did a great job. He had a script that he got out and told people, yeah, three minutes a piece. If you're just repeating something that somebody has already said, I'm gonna stop you. If, if, and we have 15 minutes total on the agenda. So if there's a bunch of you here on one topic, Talk amongst yourselves, because when we get to 15 minutes, I'm shutting it down. Um, yeah. Items that are on the agenda, if you, if you start talking about an item that's on the agenda later in the meeting, I'm going to stop you and have you wait until that agenda item comes up. Um, so, Johnny, is that a, that's not, is that inappropriate, or is that just a suggestion to not have items discussed that are later on in the agenda? Well, the, the, the problem that you'll run into, Carrie, is efficiency again is if when you get to that item and, and you've got a time slot to discuss that agenda item and you tell people, okay, you've got three minutes each to discuss on this agenda item. Well, and my neighbors actually suggested doing this. They said, we only get three minutes on our topic asking for this, for, for this uh, permit from the city, so the hardship permit. So let's take another three minutes at the comment period. And they stack them up. So you, you, from an efficiency standpoint, it doesn't work for the council. So that, that's why I suggest that. And I told my neighbors, no, don't, they'll see right through that and it's just going to hurt us. So do that. But we don't take comment on it. If you've got nine items on there, you're not taking public comment on every item. On yeah. Every so, so, right. So, so, so the public comment time, that's really the only time they're going to have a chance to talk about it. And only if our items, we don't public it, comment well, on every item. But if you think you need items, input then you should open it up for comment on at that agenda item time again if the agenda item is one in which you should be taking input from the public if it's a type of an agenda item where you're in almost in a due process type setting 